Hi there ESO people! From April 4th until April 23rd runs the 10th anniversary jubilee event. Let's take a look at what's new and how to best partake it in it. First off, there is a passive 100% XP bonus, so it's an excellent time to level up new characters, companions or just grind some CP points. Second, take the starter quest from Crown Store and follow it up to get an anniversary memento cake. Put it in a quick slot and use it once every day to get 3 event tickets. I'll show you what you can buy with them in a moment. Third, reward boxes. During the event, game will shower you with them. You will get one for finishing any repeatable quest, daily or weekly, basically any quest that is not a zone story quest. They will also drop when looting a final boss, be it from a dungeon, trial or overland. Also from incursion events. That's Dark Anchors, Somerset Geysers, Skyrim Harrow Storms and so on. Reward mails from PvP or Tales of Tribute activities will have them attached too. The third gift box, the gold one, will contain a page from a new style, Earthbone Elite Armor, which as always, is best sold early on when the price is high and both cheaply after the event when market is oversaturated. The gold box will also contain fragments of the new Jubilee Steed mount. One gold box per day means only one fragment per day, so players will have to buy at least five fragments with event tickets to complete the mount. Zos is trying to tighten the ticket budget. Regular blue gift boxes have a chance to contain stall pages from previous events, Bone Mold, Saber Kill and the Worm Cult. The first two are cheap, the latter is slightly expensive at the end of the year, but its price plummets during anniversary events as the market is resupplied. Random motifs will end up on guild traders, so expect prices to go down. This is a good time to fill up your crafter's collection. There are two approaches here, either try to undercut competition and sell them fast or do the opposite. If you have gold and inventory space, buy all expensive ones while the prices are down, hold them for a month and then start reselling them with profit. That's how the rich get richer. The main course during the event, at least for long-term players, will be farming of 5 unique, previously unobtainable styles. While they were in the game for a long time, they were only seen on NPCs during story quests. True Flame Sword will drop from a fishing node, Staff of Worms from a Dolmen, Sunara Staff and Barba's Helmet from a World Boss in Vardenfell, Ulvor Staff from a Geyser in Somerset. Chances are very low, but except for fishing, you will also get gift boxes and loads of XP, so it's 3-in-1 farming. Use your XP scrolls, now is the time. Just remember, only top 12 DPS players will get the loot from bosses, so join a farming group or you may have a problem. Lay dots on the ground before the boss spawns and then spam a direct damage ability preferably an AoE one. Also consider turning off additional ally effects in menu. It might save an older PC from melting down. I am not joking, just take a look. World bosses spawn every 5 minutes. It's possible to jump between 2 of them or even 3 late in the night for constant action. If you want all 5 styles, then prepare for a long grind. Take regular breaks and listen to some podcasts. The contents of the gift boxes are very random. Sometimes they will be trash and sometimes you will get like a quarter million worth of crafting materials. Transmute stones are always welcome. Now let's look at Impresario's inventory. There are two out of three fragments of the new Master of Schemes personality, which is certainly more interesting than previous body markings. Don't waste tickets on the new Earthbone style, buy it with gold. Jubilee Steed Mount requires 25 fragments, 
So if you get one daily and the event lasts 20 days, then five will have to be purchased with tickets. The steed itself looks like a six-year-old princess project, but somehow it's not a unicorn. There is not much to say about cake furnishings, except that Zos added a new achievement tied to them to force players into buying cake slices. Not cool Zos, not cool. If you don't have cakes from previous years, this is a chance to catch up. Rapper kits and guild commendations are trash. If you haven't participated in past events, you may want to check Back of Jubilee Yesteryear which contains one random but curated style page from those events. I will make another video about this bug. Right now, I will only advise you to buy all cheap styles from guild traders first, to shrink the list of missing contents from the bug, and only then use tickets to buy them from Impresario. Impresario's assistant have everything needed to get the Deadlands Scorcher an average looking skin that will cost you an absurd amount of tickets. Hide shoulders is self-explanatory. Aurora Firepot Spider instructions, along with three parts that are in the back of yesteryear, can be combined into an average looking non-combat pet. And finally, the Indrig vendor has fragments of Nascent, Luminous and Ice Breath Indrigs, plus Shimmering and Rhyme Dusk in Rick Pets. If you collect them from scratch, they will also cost you a ton of tickets. 20 to get the Nascent, and then 40 to morph it into a Luminous or Ice Breath. But at least Indrigs are cute. Pets are cheaper with only 10 tickets each. Indrig Vendor can only be found in Craglorn in Belkarth Festival Grounds while Impresario and her assistant are in every Alliance capital and in most DLC zones. And that is all. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye.